What's up everybody and welcome to episode 4 of Kingdom Rivals. In today's episode, we're going to be checking off some stuff on this to-do list. Well, specifically, one thing. Uh, but we're going to get into at least three of the categories. So we're going to be finishing up the pasture area today, as well as working on our spawn curtain and getting some of the paths laid out. But we're just going to be doing it on that one side and kind of focusing in that general area. So let's head on over. And I think everything that I have in my inventory is what I should need. So we'll see if that's actually the case. Um, and I'm gonna fly over there because it was just my time. And yeah, if, we can, if I land here, you can see that usually they're waiting to snipe me if I come out that door. So. We'll, we'll see if we can snipe them, maybe. My aim is off, because I've been playing a lot of Skyrim, and the uh, declination of the arrow is significantly less in Skyrim than it is in Minecraft, and so Minecraft everything usually wind up being just a little bit too low, um, at least after I've played Skyrim. But they're both super fun games. So, yeah. So, this is where we're gonna be working, and as you can see, we've got some guys that are kinda hiding out. This is why we need spawn proofing. This twice. Um, just so that way we can feel safe when we come out here. Uh, I think everything else, if there is anything else, should be contained in the pens. As you can see, I've already got a bed here. Uh, that's what we're gonna use to pass the night because, as you just saw, this area is not yet safe from spawn proofing. So, I have a reference picture that I'm going off of, which I'll see if I can edit it uh, onto the screen of work that I did in our backup of this world, so I can kind of plan out everything that I'm gonna do without having to build it and then tear it down and build it again for recording purposes. Uh, and it kind of streamlines it so that you guys don't have to watch the entire process of everything back and forth. <laughs> um, so the main thing that's going to happen here is, if, as you saw in the picture, assuming that I was able to edit it in, I may be giving myself a little too much credit in my skills, we'll see. Uh, so basically in this central area here, we're going to have kind of like a big oval pathway with a oval shaped planter in the middle. That's just going to add some color. It's going to tie in some of the colors and plants and uh, style that we see in the inner courtyard and some of the planters and you know, like the big birch tree. Um, so it's just going to help tie that together. And then it's also going to allow us to use some hidden lighting do some spawn proofing without lighting because the path blocks are spawn proof, uh, as well as just kind of generally bring in a lot more color and a lot more texture and depth to this area because it kind of looks the same. Uh, we got a lot of grass here and there really isn't much breaking this area up. So my goal is to kind of break up this middle area, break up some of the stuff leading us to the boats over that way and just really kind of start to build some of the story and build some of the lore around all these little parts. So we're also gonna add in time willing that we uh, can add in some of the carts and fill them up with supplies and maybe have some of the horses looking like they're bringing the carts back in after they finish the task or taking some carts out, maybe with the wool, uh, maybe with some barrels, we can get some milk buckets or something like that and put those in there. So I'm going to start by marking out kind of my lines, um, and I really like to use dirt. Um, if, you, if any of you guys watch the Hermitcraft server, and specifically Good Times with Scar, then you'll know that he kind of drafts out all of the things that he does in dirt. Um, I usually don't build a build in dirt and then take it down, but if I have something that's kind of on the ground or I'm building up, then we will usually draft it out in this way. So the plan 
is we're gonna have an oval and it's gonna be two blocks away from this pen and it's also going to be two blocks away from this pen and then it looks like in my reference photo uh, it's only one block away from these pens. So I'm just gonna throw down some blocks there and kind of count out this area so that I can see how big it is. So if we make this kind of at the corner, because if I know where the center is of one side, then I will be able to make the rest of the oval. Um, and it doesn't have to be an exact match to the reference picture, but that's kind of the idea of what we're going for. So we got one, two, three. Okay, so I got 27. So if I count out uh, 13 blocks, and then that next 14th block should be the center block. So we'll have 13 on either side. So one, two. Okay, so I'm just gonna confirm that there's 13 on this side as well. Perfect. So now we've got the center of this, and if I remember correctly, this was 11 blocks long, because this is the long side of our oval. So we have... Hold on, my reference picture keeps closing, because I've just got it on my phone right now. So, <laughs> yeah. Alright, it's so one, two, three. So there should be 11 if I count correctly. Yes, okay. So now that we have this line, then everything else should go a little bit faster. So this is three, two, one, and then one, two, three, four. And then we just kind of continue that pattern on all four sides, and then just you want to double check whenever you're doing like a circle or an oval that things actually match up with where you expect them to, and this does. Um, this is a pretty small shape, uh, but if you're doing a really big circle or a really big oval, uh, checking intermittently like this is really, really important because you don't want to get to the end and have it be off by two blocks because if you messed up somewhere in the middle or before that, then you're going to have to go back and redo a ton of stuff. And that just really sucks. I've been there, and so speaking from experience, if you just want to double check, it's kind of like the idea of you cut once, or measure twice, cut once. Um, it, it certainly rings true even in Minecraft projects. Okay, awesome. So at this point, I can remove my reference blocks, and you'll notice there's ice under there. In a lot of these outer areas, uh, in the outer courtyard, there are little lakes that just have ice on them. And so I, a lot of them I tried to fill in, but it all depended on how much dirt <laughs> or fill material I had with me at the time because I was just trying to cover everything and so some of it got covered some of it or some of it got filled and then some of it just kind of got uh, filled in with like ice or something from the other ponds and then that was kind of that <laughs> um I really hate this <laughs> see sometimes I come to bed in Minecraft there we go Sometimes I come to bed when it looks like that, and it'll actually let me sleep, and other times it won't. And I've been playing Minecraft for quite a long time, and I've still never gotten that in come down of when can I actually run in and get in bed. Okay, so now that we have our base oval done, um, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of trample down the rest of the path and get down to the interior oval where we're gonna have the planting bed.
Okay, so this is the final path shape, and then I'm gonna surround it with a layer of stone brick slabs, and this is going to be the little planter area. So this is gonna be the perimeter um, that just kind of separates the area. It adds a little bit more color. It kind of ties it in with the rest of the castle because we have all the stone brick embellishments and everything around the grounds. And so this just really helps to tie everything together. And I realized that I forgot stone bricks because this little gap here, um, I actually don't want it to be the dirt. It's grass now in a lot of the places, but it'll get broken down into dirt because there's the block on top of it. So I want to replace that with the stone bricks uh, to make it look kind of like it's an inset planter, but I want to lay down the dirt before I do that. And I need to look at my reference picture to see where I have everything spaced out. And then this will give this some time to grow the grass on it as well. I'm gonna fly over the wall here and grab some stone. Don't know if I have any made. Yes, this should be enough. I could use the slabs also, uh, but just for sake of placing a block that is kind of hard to see, uh, I prefer to use the full block because then you go lose slabs by accidentally placing them on the bottom side of the block and then you wind up using a full block of the anyway. And yes, if you're wondering, I could have done this before I put the stone brick slabs in, but this is the way that I did it when I was planning because I was kind of figuring everything out as I was going and so that order of events just kind of stuck for this. But I'm gonna finish up doing this around the sides and then I'll get back to you. Alright, so now that's done all the way around, so now you can see it kind of looks a little bit better, just a little bit cleaner. Um, it makes it look a little bit more professional, in my opinion. And so now we're going to get into this little planter area because this is uh, something that it looks kind of complicated because it looks really busy, um, but it isn't actually that complicated to put together. And we're gonna fill it with bamboo and all this foliage, as well as oak leaves. Um, being that we're in a frozen biome, um, they are gonna look a little bit desaturated. Um, if you want leaves that don't look desaturated, then you can use the spruce leaves or the birch leaves as well. Um, still retain their color and they don't really change with the weather. Um, but I just prefer the oak leaf texture over the spruce or the birch, at least on their own, to make like bushes and things. So I'm okay with a little bit of the desaturation. Um, I realized that I forgot. I'm also going to throw in some of the warped roots just to uh, make it look a little bit more interesting and kind of tie in uh, 
uh, some of the colors that we see like in the sails and on the roofs of a lot of the buildings because uh, that'll match that color. So it's just all about bringing in little elements of all the pieces of the castle and all the different areas that you are building with. Uh, it brings them together and it really just helps to tie the different areas together because we could make this big build and everything could look different, everything could use a different set of blocks and a different texture of blocks or color palette, whatever it may be, and it's not really going to look like one cohesive thing. And so maintaining the same blocks First off, is just a really great way to ensure that your build looks coherent all the way throughout, um, but also just uh, tying in, tying it all together with the little things like the uh, little blocks and plants that have that color. Uh, so here I am kind of covering these sea lanterns in the leaves. So this just gives um, a nice source of light that looks kind of hidden. Um, obviously you can still see the sea lanterns, but once we add some of the other foliage and stuff, it'll probably stick out less. Um, this is one of my favorite ways to conceal lighting. Um, it's if, if you need to conceal lighting, throw a planter or throw a garden or something in there, throw a bush and put a sea lantern or a piece of glowstone or like a uh, glow shroom or something and it'll just really tie everything together um, and once you're making your bushes just kind of play around with them you usually don't get it perfect the first time at least i usually don't get it perfect the first time um, after you've made a few of them then you kind of get more of an idea of making it look like something that's kind of growing over something else uh, instead of just making it kind of look like a cube or kind of lopsided or misshapen. So I think for this, this is going to be our setup for the bushes. I'm going to throw down the bamboo next and I'm actually going to bone meal it because I don't want the bamboo growing up super tall. Um, it could be a way to add height, and that is kind of what I'm using it for here, but if it gets to be super tall, then to me it kind of draws the eye up too much, and then it kind of leads you away from the rest of the build. So if you're growing bamboo, um, or like sugarcane even, and sugarcane won't grow nearly as tall as bamboo, but even if you're growing sugarcane, then you can stop its growth by putting a piece of string on top, and it'll be mostly unnoticeable. So when I'm looking at it from here, I can see it, but as you kind of back away and looking at it from a, uh, from a few blocks away, or even just in passing, it's less noticeable. Um, but it prevents you from having to come back to it every single time and mowing these down in height. And so if we just kind of bone meal these to get them at varying levels and growth stages, oh, and it's nighttime and I didn't even notice because the planter is lit up. But this is the benefit of spawn proofing because we can do things and we don't necessarily have to notice if they're full. But now I'm going to be plagued for the rest of this video by thinking that one of these shorter pieces of bamboo is a creeper, even though I know it's not. Alright, we want this guy to grow up. And adding the different tiers to this planting bed, so making that kind of inner area a little, or one block higher, just helps to add depth and texture as well. Um, it, that was the color. Uh, I did experiment when I was kind of planning for this 
and had it all just flat, but a lot of your plants are all kind of the same height, so just adding a little bit to it makes it just all that, just a little bit more detailed. Okay, so this is coming together. Right now everything is looking rather green. We just got some different shades of green happening, but once I double check that all these have grown and have been stopped, or have stopped growing, um, then we can kind of move on to the other flowers. So now we're going to move on to our two tall flowers, or two blocks tall flowers. And I want to put these on both levels to just give us some variation in the height. And I don't want to get carried away with this one because I do want to add in some of this lilac as well. It's just really pretty. Add some different colors. Um, I'll usually try to keep them off of the same kind of field of view if they're the same flower. Alrighty, I think that that is pretty good for those. So now I'm going to add in, start adding in some of the shorter flowers. And there really is no right or wrong way to do this. Just kind of go for it and if you like it then that's awesome if you don't like it then you can just pick them up really easily and move them somewhere else um one of my re recommendations um is when you're out exploring if you like see a flower or you see anything like that uh, or any plants then pick it up um maybe you're not really into flowers <laughs> or something like that but they just add a really uh good amount of color, especially if you're building um, in a smaller space. So you could just be decorating your house and you're looking for just that little extra piece of color or texture. A flower pot with a flower is a really, really great way to kind of bring all that together. So. One of the things that I usually always do whenever I start a new world is I'm always collecting the flowers and then usually my inventory gets filled up with flowers and plants as well as all the early game stuff. And so uh, I'm really excited for the bundles in the update that's coming because they'll let you put all of that generally or normally non-stackable stuff uh, it'll be stackable, and so that'll be pretty nice and helpful <laughs> on that front. Um, before I get too carried away with the overworld flowers, I do want to throw in some of these mushrooms. Uh, one project that I did in our previous world um, so the, the group of us that plays on this world, uh, with some transitions to some of the newer guys, uh, our friend Cybersword, who we made the present for, um, who you saw explode <laughs> at the beginning of this video. Um, he's pretty new, but uh, like the guy in, in charge of the Kingdom of Night, Desert Scorpion, uh, and myself, we, we've been playing together at multiplayer worlds for a while, uh, and... <laughs> our previous realm world, I lived in a flower forest, and one of my projects that I did in that world, I'll have to find it, I'll have to take a screenshot of it and put it here in the video. Um, I actually made a ton of bone meal and uh, bone meal the entire flower forest. I cut down all the trees so that it was all just grass and I made it all uh, nice and smooth and it took a really, really long time, but it was so worth it. <laughs> um, we did end up switching to this world not too long after, uh, and so it 
I didn't end up getting to enjoy it for too long, but it turned out super cool. And at this point, um, this is kind of the central area. And so you can see from here, obviously, it kind of breaks up the sections. Um, when we're walking around the path, you kind of got to go all the way around to see things, to see our creeper taking a bath. Oh, he was behind it. Um, but if we kind of go up here oh, and hit the wall, um, we can see that it's just adding some variety. It's adding that different color, it's adding some more textures, and it's just really kind of breaking up the flatness that was there in this area before. Um, so what I want to do now is make the path that leads out to here. So I think this is all the carts that we're going to add in this area so far. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to do before I wrapped up the video uh, was actually make a couple more of the bushes. Um, so if we check this, oh, yep, bamboo went into the system. But this you can see, we sent it through, comes out in the end, doesn't bump up anything in there. Um, so I'm going to grab some of these because when I was doing my um, build testing for this, in these corners I put bushes instead of the lanterns and then I remembered my kind of light setup that uses the soul lanterns but um, also uses the end rod so you're still getting that full amount of light. And I made just a couple bushes with the sea lanterns underneath them instead. And I think I just like this design way more. So on these edges where um, it is kind of free floating, I just removed that stair. It's not something that's super noticeable when you're looking at it. Um, and it just keeps it looking, it keeps it from having like a weird space um, because a bush in real life isn't going to have a random gap. I mean, it might because they can kind of do what they want, but <laughs> my point basically is that we just want to fill up the space and not have any weird holes in the stuff. Um, and so with that, I think I'm going to look a little bit more lopsided. Maybe. Like that. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I had some bushes in there, and I think it just helps to fill the space a little bit more. Um, I might add another cart, or I might just add like some flowers, or maybe like a stack of pumpkins, or um, maybe I'll add some hay bales that had gotten offloaded from a cart and just make like a little shack or something for the hay bales to be stored in over here um just to kind of fill that space but i think we're all out of time for today's video so with that this area looks so much better uh, we've got so much more color and just um, separation and depth in all the things so with that Thank you guys for watching. Remember, if you like the video, don't forget to leave a like. If you have any questions or just want to say hi, don't forget to leave a comment. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and play subscribe. And thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one.